In this CSS video, we are going to talk about the clear property and how to use that. Now, as you can see here, I've just created a very simple HTML page. We have an image that we're displaying, and then I've created some text and an H2 element, which I put inside a div, and I gave that div an ID of test, which we're actually going to use to specify the clear property. And then you can see over here, I've got a style sheet, and I'm just floating our image to the left. And if you want to follow along, you'll need an image that you can use. In this case, I'm using this Caesar image. If you followed my other videos, you'll know that I've used this many times. So you want to copy your image to your web folder. So let's go ahead and first load this up. And there you can see our image is floated to the left. And here is our div that contains the heading and the text. And remember, if you took my CSS tutorial for beginner series, and I certainly hope you did, you will remember that when you float an image or an element, it pins it to the left. And that basically means that this space is essentially unused. And any elements that the browser can fit into here, it will. And so that's why this div is going into here. So again, what if you don't want this text here, what if you wanted it below the image? You didn't want it to the side, you wanted it below this floated image. That is where the clear property comes into play. So the clear property is directly related to the float property. They go hand in hand. So again, if you're not floating an element, whatever that element is, you are not going to use the clear property. There is no need. In fact, it will not even work because basically the clear property allows you to tell the browser how you want to treat this unused space. Do you want elements in here or do you not? If you don't want this text to wrap around the image, if you want it below the image, then you want to use the clear property. So basically, again, you're specifying whether other elements will be side by side to the floated element or whether they will go below the element. Now, some people want those elements to fill in here. Other people do not. They want those elements to appear below their floated elements. And again, that's where the clear property comes into play. And so let's go ahead and specify the clear property. And again, I created an ID here of test so that we can use the clear property against this div. So let's go over to our style sheet and let's just copy this right here. And we'll just paste this down here. And we're just gonna specify clear. And of course, we're not working against our image, we're working against the div. So basically what we're saying here is work against all floated elements that are floated to the left and move any elements that are right next to it below it. In this case, this div. So we're basically saying here, take this div and move it below any elements that are floated to the left of this div. That's what we're saying. So let's save this and let's go over and open up our web page again and take a look at that. It worked. Basically the browser read in that clear property and it moved this element below our floated element, which is what we wanted. Now let's say this image was over here to the right we would simply specify right instead of left right here. But most of the time, and I would say about 95% of the time, you're gonna to wanna to use the value of both. That will basically cover any elements that are floated to the left and the right. Because chances are, if you wanna move elements below a floated element on the left, you're probably gonna to wanna to do the same to any elements that are floated on the right. So that's usually what you're gonna specify here is both. So let's save this and just make sure this works again. And it did. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video.